Governors in this country have been reduced to slaves by members of county assemblies. And the Council of Governors led by Deputy Chair Ahmed Abdullahi have said enough is enough. And they've come out with a new set of demands that they are hoping the legislature through the National Assembly can address. Now in this video I want us to look at what those demands are and then we'll also look at possible solutions moving forward to solve this particular debacle whereby MCAs, it seems like they are arm twisting the governors at will. Now before we proceed, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. So the demand from the Council of Governors, it basically boils down to two things. They're requesting for new legislation to protect them, and they're also requesting for timelines into which an impeachment motion can be brought to the county assembly by a sitting member of county assembly. When I listened to the deputy chair of the Council of Governors, Ahmed Abdullahi, it seems like they are saying they need help, but they don't know what kind of help. Nor do they have a suggestion. Otherwise, I believe if they did, they'd have given it during that particular speech. Into account the peculiar facts and the circumstances of the case. The governor has been in office for a period of four months only. And to date, she has not yet been fully able to set up her government. I the Senate to consider enacting a legislation that will regulate the relationship between the county assemblies and the executive. The law should also provide for timelines time within which an impeachment motion can be introduced in the assemblies that mirrors the procedure for recall under the Elections Act. So I did some research and uh, I've been able to come up with some ideas. You guys will let me know if uh, it might be beneficial, if at all it might be converted to actual legislation. The first suggestion is that we should have a one-year grace period before an impeachment motion can be brought against a sitting governor. Now, I'm not saying one year from election day or from the day they take the oath of office, but one year from the day that the governor's entire cabinet has been approved by the county assembly. And that in and of itself will present a lot of benefits to the counties. MCAs will no longer be able to say, if you don't do X, Y, Z, we won't approve your cabinet. Because by not approving the cabinet, you're giving the governor immortality. Because a governor who does not have the needed troops and generals is not open to impeachment. So if the MCAs want to send home that person, they first approve the entire cabinet, and then they wait for the one-hour clock to run down, then the governor is eligible for impeachment. Now the benefit here is this, that the governors will be able to get their cabinets approved in record time, and number two, no one will be impeached without at least them being at the helm of power for at least a year. A year is long enough to know a governor who is useless and a governor who is doing what they ought to do. But if you impeach someone in three months, that is the equivalent of political abortion in my opinion. You are terminating someone's tenure before you even see the fruits or the lack of fruits thereof. Also, I believe the law ought to be changed. If a sitting governor is impeached, we should immediately go to a by-election. That story of the deputy governor taking over should be done away with. If the governor has been impeached, then the entire county should prepare for a by-election which will be delivered by the IEBC. And during that by-election, the governor who was impeached should be allowed to vie. I know as that now, if you're impeached, you're barred from office permanently, the way we saw happen to Mike Sonko. But my belief is that if you are impeached from office, you should be given a chance through a by-election to confirm to us whether the people are really with you. Because power is with the people. That is what the constitution says at least. So no tiny group of MCAs or senators or whoever should be able to usurp power from the people. So we go back for a by-election. If you can recapture the seat, you go on to serve as governor. And if at all you lose that by election, then you should be barred from office completely because you have received the third strike. The MCAs impeached you. The motion went to the Senate. The senators impeached you. It went back to the people and the people have rejected you. So those are three strikes. And with that, even you will agree that, hey, I think I should not hold office ever again. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I would also suggest 
that once the governor is impeached and we go for the by-election, and the governor recaptures his or her seat, then the member of the county assembly who introduced that motion of impeachment, he or she should also lose power and go defend themselves in their ward. Because by the people re-electing the governor, it means that they do not agree with that impeachment motion. And whoever introduced it should go back to the people and also show us whether they really are with them. So if that can be passed, it will help us make more sense of things. Governors will be able to rule for at least a year prior to this harassment of impeachment and whatnot. And also MCAs will be very careful about bringing up impeachment motions. Because if you impeach someone who is popular on the ground and they go and get re-elected, that means shortly after their re-election and once they are sworn into office again, it will now be your turn to go to the people and explain yourself as to why you are impeaching the governor that they have elected twice. And also what that does is that governors will not be impeached based on their popularity in the county assembly. They will be impeached based on their popularity in the county. So if you want to remove a governor, you just go and do a small poll in that particular county. Do you think so and so should be impeached, yes or no? I think usually for those polls, they'll have around 2,500 respondents with a margin of error of 0.5 thereabout. And then they can be able to see for sure that 80% of the residents are saying Kawira Mwangaza should go. So there's no risk there, let me table the impeachment. But as at now, the people are not consulted. Power is in the county assembly. If the MCS don't like you, they send you home. If you fail to give them the money they want, like the Ward Development Fund, which is the core issue here, they can also send you home. If you are an independent governor or a governor who was elected by the minority party, or rather the minority in the county assembly, they can also send you home. Even if your own deputy betrays you, they can still send you home because maybe they've sold their soul to the highest bidder. We saw that happening in Kiambu. The moment Waititu was removed, his deputy started insulting him. And if we did that, politics would actually be very, very interesting. You remember the impeachment of Mike Sonko. They removed Sonko and they brought in an illegitimate governor in Ann Kananu. She was never Sonko's deputy. She just came out of nowhere. She was sanitized and she became governor. If what I'm saying was enshrined in law, we would have gone back to a by-election. And if Mike Sonko recaptured that seat, the MCA who brought that impeachment motion, whether it is an ODM or a whoever MCA, and that MCA would have been sent back to his ward or her ward to defend their seat. And chances are if the governor recaptures his or her seat, and then you're the one who is up for re-election, they will spend a lot of resources now to send you home. So that is one way of bringing repercussion to people for just bringing fictitious impeachments. Now I'm not saying for Kawira Mwangaza it's fictitious, but like the one for Mike Sonko it was very very much fictitious. The one for Waititu it was also fake only removed Waititu because of his allegiance to William Ruto. Even Sonko, that was the same issue. Sonko has always been a William Ruto person. In 2017, when they were vying for the first time, Uhuru Kenyatta supported Peter Kenneth, and William Ruto supported Mike Sonko. So much as Mike Sonko got there, Mike Sonko's allegiance has always been with William Ruto, and Uhuru Kenyatta knew that. That is why he wanted to push that man out of that particular seat. But that's just my opinion, guys. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read it and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button, and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios.